Hey everyone, Natalie here again with Artisan Cakes talking a little bit more about airbrushes. And in one of the previous videos I talked about learning how to control that flow. So I wanted to give you a series of exercises that you can use either with your single action or your dual action airbrush to get a comfort level in controlling the flow of your airbrush. Here we go today. We are going to do a series of small dots and I've, uh, I've just pulled a piece of white butcher paper and put it in my cake safe spray booth. That way I don't end up with all kinds of lovely color in my nose later. Um, it's going to go into the filtration system instead. So I'm going to do a series of small dots playing with pulling the trigger back to see how it affects my pigment placement on the paper as we open the iris. I will do a series of tiny dots, bigger dots, bigger dots, and then I'll pull that airbrush all the way back. Then I'm also going to do a series of lines, doing exactly the same thing, doing a series of straight lines by barely pulling that trigger back, another series of straight lines, pulling the trigger back a little bit more, and then as far back as we can go. That way you can see the changes in line size and dot size as we add more pigment and air pressure all in one go with a single action airbrush. I got my favorite color of course. This is definitely premium airbrush color and it is a wonderful teal color. You guys know I like teal, right? Just a few drops in there. We're going to hit the on off switch. We also have a dial to control flow. I'm going to go midway in this Air Genie Pro. And then a series of small dots. just to get a feeling for the flow. I'm going to open this trigger up a little bit more, keeping the same distance from the paper. You want to stop the flow before you begin seeing splatter. And then pulling back all the way gives you a wide diameter. If you are going to add more air pressure as you're pulling back, then you need to have your airbrush further away to avoid splatter. That's a result of pulling your airbrush too far to create too much air pressure and pigment flow while being too close to the surface to begin with. Now for a series of lines. Pulling the airbrush just slightly back and create your line. A little bit further back, get a little bit more air pressure. And the more you pull back that trigger, the wider and wider that line becomes. And this is how you learn to start controlling the flow of your airbrush by doing small exercises of dots and lines, a few at a time, controlling the trigger going back. So don't be afraid to play with your airbrush. Get used to the control of the flow. Play with the trigger pull, as well as the distance from your surface. And uh, butcher paper, construction paper, just standard old typing paper, all of those will work just fine. And just play around with it a little bit and get a feeling for the flow of your single action airbrush.
Now we're going to do the same exercise with a dual action airbrush. Taking the color cap off and the protective cap off the needle. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the airbrush and let it develop a little bit of pressure before I begin playing with my airbrush. And remember we have two stages of control now, both down and back. So we're going to do a series of dots playing around with a press down and the back slowly, press down a lot more back and all the way full throttle and back. So the first series of dots is a small amount of push down and a small amount of pull back. Same amount of push down and further back. And again, same amount of push down and then full throttle. Opens that iris a lot. So you definitely have to be further back, further away from your surface. You get a more broad stroke. Now if I push this, the nozzle down, if I push the trigger down all the way, I get a ton of air flow and I start pulling the trigger back and you'll see I get a much wider diameter circle immediately. You really have no reason to pull that trigger all the way back because that's what happens. Too much flow, too much pressure. So a series of lines pushing down slightly and then slightly back. And you'll notice I may be pushing down, but there's no pigment yet. So it's not until I start pulling back that pigment begins to flow. So one more time, a series of lines push down, a lot more airflow pulling back. And so I need to move a lot faster the more I pull that back. And you'll find that the more you pull the trigger back, the faster you have to go to you, and the wider that line is. So then you'll find a nice happy medium. To build your airbrush color, depending on what you're using it for. So down controls airflow, back controls pigment flow, and that's your dual action. So more control there, you definitely have a lot more control, just takes a little bit more effort to become nimble enough with this index finger to control both down and back at the same time. <laughs>